in a positive way by clarifying it, then I count that as it worked out. So do you wait for the manifestation to confirm the impulse or are you getting better at acknowledge the impulse even before? Can you feel more and more what is going to work out in a stronger way? What we're asking is, do you believe that you are getting better at focusing? In other words, because this is what we want you to hear from us. This is what we feel so strongly around you. So you figured this stuff out. You've been listening and you figured it out. And now you're in a place where you are let us begin again so sometimes people say how deliberate of a creator should I be because at first we say you create your own reality and you said oh good and then we said you create your own reality and you said oh no because it felt like responsibility and then we said be deliberate about what you think and then you said oh cancel cancel as you worried about the thoughts that you were thinking and then we said get into the receiving mode and receive what the vortex has whipped up for you and now a lot of you are in a sort of aligned place where often you receive the impulse but you are in a sort of wait and see place rather than in a now it's time to turn on the juice of focus place and that really is what we want to say to you is that you have figured out step one and you have figured out step two and you have figured out step three and now as you focus more specifically on the things that are important to you you're now in a place where the universe will begin to deliver to you with more precision the details of what you want because you're right things are always working out for you and that really feels good and you've worked most of the details out in step one but there is such an exhilarating life force that flows through you when you understand how all of this works and then you begin to focus it's almost as if you are dictating to the universe the details of what you want so we've been saying to people if you're not really in alignment and not steadily in alignment then talking 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 about what you want works against you but if you are steadily in alignment if you are trusting the laws of the universe and you are feeling good about your own worthiness as you are then the more detailed you give to the specifics about what you want the more satisfying the experience is and so that's our message for you. That's what you lighted up in the back of the room asking about. I think that is true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's exactly Something more? I'm good. Really good. Thank you. Really good. Really good. Do you like being the creator of your own experience? Yes. Do you like being the accidental creator of your own experience? you like being the deliberate creator of your own experience you like being aware of what you're creating you like that hands-on feeling I am um, had a really wonderful interaction with my kids this morning they um, have started to be interested in listening to the getting into the vortex meditations my daughter said something hilarious that I wanted to share with you which is that um, she said Papa I don't understand any of this but it's sure fun to listen to <laughs> says it all doesn't it it really does yeah because on some level she is feeling the harmonics of it and she understands more than she is ready to acknowledge yeah there's much more taking place in a gathering like this than the verbal interaction it's a vibrational interaction and that's what she's describing is that feeling of resonance and so her mind is making sense of the vibration of it isn't that interesting feels good to her. your mind makes sense of the vibration of things and the thing that is the most confusing to children is when their mind is making sense of the vibration of things but the words say something confusing and so that's why it's always a good idea to talk to your kids as much as you can but only talk to them when you know you're in alignment but talk to them as much as you can but only when you know you're in alignment but talk to them as much as you can but only when you know you're in alignment because the rest of the world's talking to them all the time that it's nice to have someone who's talking to them from that place that feels so good yeah really good I've been curious the whole time that I've gotten to know the teachings of Abraham um, since the first time I ever heard Esther's translation about the sense of humor 
And just simply, is that part of Esther's translation or does the universe just absolutely have a sense of humor? Because that would really explain a lot. <laughs> Some of both are true because Esther likes fun more than all other things put together. And she likes funny. She gravitates to that. But what you're feeling mostly, because unless you're in the vibrational vicinity, you don't make the connection. So it's about timing. It really is about our understanding of where you are and our desire to pull you into alignment through that timing. That's why it kind of catches you by surprise. Aren't the funniest things usually the things that you didn't know you were ready for and suddenly there you were. It's about timing. It's about vibrational momentum. Also, you'll never meet anybody who can read a crowd better than we can <laughs> because we've got your number. We know where you are in relationship to everything that you want, you see. And so here we move along and then all of a sudden there is a very strong awareness that here we go. Yeah. I also wanted to express my appreciation for Esther in that not only about the translation, but in the examples that she's willing to share in these moments of her own life and her own experience and her own work. Oh, with she's unconscious. The we just take them and run with them. <laughs> Her willingness is always there and we are appreciating that too. But you know why it's easy for her to be willing for that? Because she rests mostly in the vibration of alignment with us. So she has that delicious place of knowing our love and appreciation only for her. She doesn't feel embarrassed because when we are flowing through her she knows that we feel the value of all of it you see because there is no wrong place to be all of your inner beings feel that way about all of you i realized on the way home from the last time that i visited with you what's come up before just today that i actually have that too i was driving home and i said it isn't the same it's not the same focus and the same intensity that esther feels but i have it too and it comes and like you said it's when it comes, it, you can't help it. You can't help but say the truth. We want to give you something important. It's not the same for Esther when she's in her car all alone either. When she's in a room here with you, with all of your asking, it's a different experience. In other words, the calling of you makes this more. It makes it more pointed. It makes it more powerful. Can I ask to, I heard you speaking with a British gentleman and it was maybe in the last few years and he was describing himself as having a bipolar disorder and it was a beautiful conversation that you had in that one you said call it what you will but you're just alive you have an incredible power of focus you told this man and that comes out on either end and that you can get extremely focused on the negative end and extremely focused on the positive end and that you were encouraging this gentleman to control his contrast better and to start to be able to stay in the lane better be aware when you're the on the rumble better. strip so that you don't get off in the bar pit before you try to correct it yeah and although we also said everyone's bipolar <laughs> to some degree because bipolar could be in the vortex out of the vortex in the receptive mode not in the receptive mode in alignment not in alignment when you really, really, really want something and you're out of sync with it, it feels awful. And when you really, really want something and you're in sync with it, it feels wonderful. I appreciate that your answer is always the same. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy because the laws don't change. And our bipolar friends are our favorite students because the intensity of their desire summons in such a strong way. I want to share with you one more thing. I heard you had a similar idea of everything's always working out for me is something that resonates. It, it just does. And I was thinking, wouldn't that be fun to have that in my vehicle? So that I was always thinking about that because I spend a lot of time there and I put little things around the house and stuff like that too. And then you said, well, we do that in the, in the bus and we had it actually on the dashboard so that it reflects in the windscreen so that you can see it so they've written it backwards and so I spent a little bit of time trying to figure out how to write it backwards and go into the mirror and be like oh close going back and then it was so exciting when I got it done <laughs> it's like I got it and I put it on my dashboard and was very excited and went about having one of the worst days I've ever had in my life <laughs> and just thought that that was with a little bit of hindsight thought that that was hilarious too um, 
And I just wanted to share that. There might have been a little more struggle in that than was necessary. Right. Yeah. Or doubt. I mean, just maybe having it there in my face caused me to, to wonder if that's actually true for me or not. And it's true, but it's, it's often difficult to avoid doubt if you've trained yourself to, toward experiencing doubt. When you can step back a little bit from that and acknowledge everything is always working out for me, no matter how it looks, because I'm putting something in the vortex at a minimum and source energy is working on it also. And so it is all working out for me, whether I'm in the receptive mode of it or not. It is working out for me, whether I'm in the receptive mode of it or not. It is all working out for me, whether I'm in the receptive mode or not. Ooh, I'm in the receptive mode. Now I can really feel and really witness how it's working out for me. And so it's helpful to know that whether you can see it or not, it is always working out for you. And then if you really want to play it a way that will serve you so well, everything is always working out for me and you. It's always working out for me and you. So then Esther is thinking, okay, I like the idea that it's working out for me and I love the idea that it's working out for others. But what if we are not working out very well together? Then it's working out for you because you go that way and you go that way. The universe is never saying that it has to work out in this particular way. It is always working out. And you're right. It does take a level of trust. And once you get to that place, it only takes a little bit of thinking about it. It's like we touched on this earlier. When you set an intention and you deliberately hold yourself in the vibrational vicinity of that intention, and then you watch it play out, it gives you more belief in your ability to focus. But when you want something and it's not working out and that's what you're noticing then it takes your belief away that things are working out for you but knowledge of the way the universe works all the doubt away you could say things are always working out for me but I'm holding most of the good stuff off for later <laughs> that was meant to be funny <laughs> things are always working out for me but apparently I'm not quite ready to let them manifest in this moment but as long as you understand how it works as long as you understand how the laws of the universe work and you begin to get a handle on how you feel, then you can relax in the knowing that things are always working out. You haven't eaten lunch yet, have you? And you're probably getting ready to want to eat lunch, aren't you? And yet we don't feel any real fear or trepidation here. Oh, just that one. <laughs> that things are not going to work out for you in that regard. In other words, you've had enough experience to know that you're probably going to eat today. Probably. And so as you come to realize that things are always working out and you realize that it doesn't matter how big it is, it's not more complicated than just finding lunch today. In other words, it's just one impulse that leads to another and leads to another. There is nothing that you cannot be or do or have. There is nothing that is off limits. There is nothing that is holding itself apart from you. Everything that you could even conceivably want is working its way into your experience and to the degree of your readiness it's showing itself to you now and now and now and now and now so good to know thank you for the stove metaphor yeah yeah <laughs> and we want you to follow the evolution of stove metaphor